Resistance to the German occupation of the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia during World War II is a scarcely documented subject. Compared to other countries under German occupation, there was little formal resistance, partly due to an effective German policy that deterred acts of resistance and annihilated organizations of resistance. In the early days of the war, the Czech population participated in boycotts of public transport and large-scale demonstrations. Later on, armed partisan groups participated in sabotage and skirmishes with German police forces. Resistance culminated in the Prague Uprising of May 1945, with Allied armies approaching, about 30,000 Czechs seized weapons. Four days of bloody street fighting ensued before the Red Army entered the nearly liberated city. The 17 November Massacre International Students' Day commemorates the anniversary of the 1939 Nazi storming of the University of Prague after demonstrations against the German occupation of Czechoslovakia. All Czech universities and colleges were closed, over 1,200 students sent to Nazi concentration camps, and nine student leaders and professors were executed. <laughs> Consolidation of resistance groups, UVOD The Czech resistance network that existed during the early years of the Second World War operated under the leadership of Czechoslovak President Edvard Benes, who together with the head of Czechoslovak military intelligence, František Moravec, coordinated resistance activity while in exile in London. In the context of German persecution, the major resistance groups consolidated under the central leadership of Home Resistance Ustredni Vedeni Odboje Domasiho, UVOD. It served as the principal clandestine intermediary between Benes and the Protectorate, which was in existence through 1941. Its long-term purpose was to serve as a shadow government until Czechoslovakia's liberation from Nazi occupation. The three major resistance groups that consolidated under UVOD were the Political Center Politike Ustredi, PU, the Committee of the Petition, We Remain Faithful. Petikni Vibor Verni Zustanim, PVVZ, and the Nation's Defense Abrana Naroda, on. These groups were all democratic in nature, as opposed to the fourth official resistance group, the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia Kask. Most of their members were former officers of the disbanded Czechoslovak army. In 1941, Uvod endorsed the political platform designed by the leftist group PVVZ, titled, For Freedom, Into a New Czechoslovak Republic. In it, Uvod professed allegiance to the democratic ideals of past Czechoslovak president Tomas Masaryk, called for the establishment of a republic with socialist features, and urged all those in exile to stay in step with the socialist advances at home. In addition to serving as the means of communication between London and Prague, the Uvod was also responsible for the transmission of intelligence and military reports. It did so primarily through the use of a secret radio station, which could reach the Czech population. However, the UVOD was known to transmit inaccurate reports, whether false intelligence data or military updates. Sometimes this was intentional. Benes often urged the UVOD to relay falsely optimistic reports of the military situation to improve morale or motivate more widespread resistance. While the UVOD served a principal aid to Benes, it did sometimes depart from his policies. During the summer of 1941, the UVOD rejected Benes' proposals for partial expulsion of the Sudeten Germans after the conclusion of the war and instead demanded their complete expulsion. The UVOD succeeded in changing Benes' official stance on this issue. <laughs> UVOD and the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia Kask. The UVOD's relationship with the Kask was an important aspect of its daily functions, as Soviet-Czech relations became a central part of their resistance efforts. The German invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941 marked a turning point in Soviet-Czechoslovak relations. Before the invasion, the main communist objective was to stop the imperialist war, and was often sympathetic to the German workers of the Reich. After the invasion, the resistance began to rely on communist support both within Czechoslovakia and from Moscow. In a broadcast from London on 24 June 1941 via the UVOD, Benes informed his country that, "...the relationship between our two states thus returned to the pre-Munich situation and the old friendship." 
While the Caisque was not an official part of the UVOD and kept its organizational independence, it called for unity of action with all anti-fascist groups. Leaders of the Caisque ingratiated themselves with the UVOD by helping to maintain Soviet-Czechoslovak relations. Benis often used these Caisque leaders to arrange meetings in Moscow to expand the Soviet-Czechoslovak partnership. There is some evidence that the UVOD may have warned the Russians about the German invasion in April 1941. In March 1941, Benis received intelligence regarding a German buildup of troops on the Soviet Union's borders. According to his memoirs, he immediately passed on that information to the Americans, British and Soviet Union. The Kaysk's fate was also closely linked with the UVOD's. It too suffered annihilation after the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich, unable to rebound until 1944. The Czech resistance and the Heydrich assassination The most famous act of Czechoslovak resistance was the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich on 27 May 1942 by Czechoslovak soldiers Jan Kubis and Jozef Gapčík. In many ways, the Uvod's demise was forecast with Heydrich's appointment as the Reichsprotector of Bohemia and Moravia in the autumn of 1941. By the end of September, Heydrich had organized the arrest of nearly all members of the UVOD and successfully cut off all links between the UVOD and London. The Nazi reaction to Heydrich's assassination is often credited with the annihilation of an effective Czech underground movement after 1942. The Nazis exacted revenge, raising to the ground the two villages of Lidice and Lizaki. In October 1942, 1,331 people were sentenced to death by German courts in the Protectorate, 1,000 Jews were sent directly from Prague to Mauthausen concentration camp, and an additional 252 people were sent to Mauthausen for involvement with the assassination plot. Finally, in the wake of the Nazi revenge, the last remaining members of the UVOD were arrested. <laughs> Partisan warfare. The character of warfare changed dramatically after 1942. Partisan groups began to form in forested or mountainous areas. During the spring of 1945, partisan forces in Bohemia and Moravia had grown to 120 groups, with a combined strength of around 7,500 people. Partisans disrupted the railway and highway transportation by sabotaging track and bridges and attacking trains and stations. Some railways could not be used at night or on some days, and trains were forced to travel at a slower speed. Waffen-SS units retreating from the Red Army's advance into Moravia burned down entire villages as a reprisal. Partisan groups had a diverse membership including former members of Czech resistance groups fleeing arrest, escaped POWs, and German deserters. Other partisans were Czechs who lived in rural areas and continued with their jobs during the day, joining the partisans for night raids. The largest and most successful group was the Jan Zizka Partisan Brigade, based in the Hostin Visitan Mountains of southern Moravia. After crossing the border from Slovakia in September 1944, the Zizka Brigade sabotaged railroads and bridges and raided the German police forces sent to hunt them down. Despite harsh countermeasures such as summary execution of suspected civilian supporters, the partisans continued to operate. Eventually, the Zizka Brigade grew to over 1,500 people and was operating in large parts of Moravia upon liberation of the area in April 1945. <inaudible> <inaudible> Prague Uprising On 5 May 1945, in the last moments of the war in Europe, citizens of Prague spontaneously attacked the occupiers and Czech resistance leaders emerged from hiding to guide them. German troops counterattacked, but progress was difficult due to the defection of the Russian Liberation Army and barricades constructed by the Czech citizenry. On 8 May, the Czech and German leaders signed a ceasefire allowing the German forces to withdraw from the city, but not all SS units obeyed. When the Red Army arrived on 9 May, the city was already almost liberated. Because it was the largest resistance action of the war and the only major battle to be fought by Czechs on Czech soil, the Prague Uprising became a national myth for the new Czechoslovak nation after the war and has been a common subject of literature. After the 1948 coup, the memory of the uprising was distorted by the communist regime for propaganda purposes. Notable individuals 
Irena Bernashkova, journalist and resistance movement member, executed by Nazis in 1942. Alois Elias, Protectorate Prime Minister, executed. Elena Hykova, communist resistance fighter and historian. Marie Kaderikova, student, executed by Nazis in 1943. Joseph Mawson, member of the early resistance movement, executed by the Gestapo in 1942. Frantisek Moravitz, head of Czechoslovak military intelligence, 1937 to 1945. Jan Oplatal, student, shot during anti-Nazi demonstration. Zdenka Pokorna, teacher and political activist. Topic. References. Topic. Bibliography. Bartosik, Carol. 1965. The Prague Uprising. Artia. Benes, Edvard. 1954. Memoirs of Dr. Eduard Benes, from Munich to New War and New Victory. Translated by Godfrey Leas. Connecticut, Greenwood Press. Crampton, R.J. 1997. Eastern Europe in the Twentieth Century. And After. London and New York, Routledge. ISBN 0-415-16423-0. Rasova, Marie 2012. Na Kazdem Kroku Boj First ed. Nove Mesto u Klumche nad Sidlinu, Seski Svaz Bajavniku za Svobodu, ISBN 978-80-260-2483-5. Luza, Radomir December 1969. The Communist Party of Czechoslovakia and the Czech Resistance, 1939–1945". Slavic Review. 28 4. Mastny, Wojciech The Czechs under Nazi Rule, The Failure of National Resistance, 1939–1942. New York, Columbia University Press. ISBN 0-231-03303-6. Orzov, Andrea 2009. Battle for the Castle, The Myth of Czechoslovakia in Europe, 1914–1948. Oxford University Press. ISBN 9780199709962. Kaczmarek, Andrzej 2013. Conclusory Essay, Activists, Jews, The Little Czech Man, and Germans. PDF. Central Europe. 5 211-333. doi.10.1179.174582.1. Suchankova, Katerina Protopartizanska operace Tetra v. Rose 1944. PDF. Masaryk University. 